All right, uh, so this class is uh, Logi 101, and then we're going to do uh, cap chain practice. So what is Logi? Logi is uh, space healers, um, and in strategic operations, we, all, you know, we have a logistics wing, and if you like healing in other games, you might like healing in this game. It's a pretty different than the uh, DP, the main part of the fleet, the DPS, or the people doing the damage. And some of the nice things about it is uh, that you are saving people instead of killing people. Um, and it's kind of a different gameplay, like with the damage you often just, all your weapons are stacked, you hit one button when someone tells you to. This, you have to do a little bit more coordination, you have to be paying attention to who needs repairing, and it, it can be a little bit more complex, uh, and also it's just a different play style. Um, turn like a lot of people who like the building part of Eve seem to like the the healing part so if it's your play style hopefully this class will let you understand a little bit better about how it works and be able to jump into one of our fleets so today what we're gonna focus on is uh, we're a shield alliance brave is a shield alliance so we're gonna do uh, we fly Ospreys and Scythes or the T1 um, the the lowest Lodgy that we fly um, and we're going to focus on the Osprey today. So first, let's go over um, the Osprey fit that um, we're going to go start with. So if you really load the MOTD, which is you do that by hitting the in the fleet channel, you go ahead and hit the um, gear, hit reload M MOTD. So that I have the different fits that we most commonly use. Now keep in mind that we actually have these these fits, if you look in the Brave Newbies Corp, we have these saved and we also have A, B versions. So sometimes the prop mod, sometimes depending on what fleet we're with, changes. So this, we're going to focus on Micro Warp Drive today. So this is what we're going with uh, fleets that the whole fleet uses Micro Warp Drive, so we need to be able to keep up with them. Uh, so you, particularly with Ospreys, you need to make sure that you are you have the same micro warp drive as everybody else before you undock. So that's very important. Um, so here I'm going to simulate the fitting. So the main feature of the Osprey and its T2 equivalent, the uh, Basilisk, is that they have bonuses to cap transfer. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to all link up. We're all going to be giving capacitor to each other. So even though by ourselves we only have 16 seconds of capacitor, will effectively have infinite capacitor um, if, as long as the chain doesn't break. So the, that chain is very, very important. And when someone dies, someone warps off, someone uh, gets off anchor, someone doesn't keep up with the rest of us, they get out. These have short range. Um, actually, that, that's 55. That's better than I thought. <laughs> um, so as long as everyone stays together and the cap train doesn't fail then it's you're very very strong and so it's very important to uh, have that coordination and be talking to each other um, and we'll demonstrate that in a little bit so what can happen is if someone warps off or dies then you have to you have to immediately readjust otherwise the whole thing can go to crap really quickly and then everybody dies so no pressure, that's the fun part. Um, okay, so what else about the ship? So the main feature, again, are the um, the remote shield boosters. This is how we heal people. So what, what do we do first? The first thing we do when we join a fleet is when you're in logistics, the most important window is the fleet window. So let me go ahead and show you with this cool t pointer tool they have. So you have the fleet finder here. Or actually that's not the one you want this one. So on if you have uh you find the fleet and then you open it up, you want to keep this window open the entire fleet. So as logistics. So then you're gonna to want to be on the history tab. So that's next to my fleet that's history. Um so this is called the broadcast window. This is where you'll see the FC can tell you to align to things. They can do do this. Um, they can tell you what to target. 
and um, this is also how you see who to heal and my my settings got reset so I'll be able to show you all how to do this so when you're in um, the, it's very important to know how to broadcast so everybody go ahead and show me that you can the very bottom right corner you can go up with that and you can say uh, you need shield so it's very important to know how to broadcast um, later after the class I'll show you how to set up a shortcut for that and then if you see on my window it was all everything's text it's hard to see it's um, so what you can do is you can color code this so I'm going to show you how to you go to the top left hamburger menu broadcast settings and you can see for need armor so even though we are an armor alliance it's good to have that on there because sometimes people miss broadcast I put mine as yellow because that's kinda like armor shield I put as light blue so you can see it really nice capacitor is green sometimes in particularly in Ospreys uh, if people are running low on capacitor they can broadcast uh, and we can help them out if we have extra capacitor or we can um, that can be a way for someone to say like hey I'm not getting the capacitor I need uh, in Logi what I will do is so broadcast target I'll turn that off because in a big fleet fight the they're often killing tons of people in a row and you're saying kill this person this person this person and all that is gonna spam up your history window so I turn that off and um, so you don't need it it's not important when I am in DPS I often have that red just so I know who to kill but for this purposes I have it off so then even if I broadcast the target it doesn't show up in my history window it doesn't spam it other thing about the fleet window here you can hit uh, clear history so often if the if we're warping away in the middle of a fight I wouldn't do that because you might miss something but if we're warping away or we're going through a gate you can clear the history so then it just doesn't spam up what, what there was before does anyone have any questions on the history window yes how do we uh, get into it to make the adjustments to color or did you say you'd cover that later I can show you okay so go to the very top left um, where it says fleet six members that's so the little three lines or four lines yes that's the, called the hamburger menu is what a lot of people call mm -hmm. it click there go down to broadcast settings oh there it is okay yeah and then you can change the color and put the X's is there any way to improve the size of those icons um, so the, the big thing is to make you can put shortcuts so like I have um, I have a shortcut so it didn't save my shortcuts apparently everything got reset so we'll go over how to make shortcuts but that's the big thing is, is okay. put it on a button so um, so it's not a problem as opposed to trying to find this in the middle of it uh, boss, I'm docked at G. Okay, can you undock? I need the ship. Ah. Who are you? Can you accept in fleet? I, sh I, I think I see you. The other thing I am noticing, though, is uh, my broadcast <laughs> settings says uh, need armor need capacitor but no need but there's no button for need shield but I do see it in the fleet menu I just don't see it in the settings uh, the shield is lower keep going down it's under need backup in position oh my goodness I don't know why it's that way CCP Lee please okay there, there, there goes my stupidity question for the no night. no I <laughs> I've opened it up. I've opened it up and said, "What is this?" Okay. Uh, so the next thing is setting up a watch list. So um, when you join a fleet, the FC will say, "Add me to your watch list." And um, so go ahead and add Jinx to care to your watch list. To do that, you right-click on my name in Fleet Chat or in Space wherever, and you go Fleet, Add to Watch List. So right-click on the name fleet add to watch list. I'm going to put Kara Glenn just because I can't put myself. So yep, I've got everyone everyone on there. Okay, so here's the watch list. Um, 
and if you go to the, the hamburger menu on the watch list, you can enter color edit mode, which I like to do, and then you can add colors. So I usually put the FC as white, just for, that's what I like to do. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to have, you're going to want to add special snowflakes. And what that means is people who are in really shiny, uh, shiny ships. So the LC or the fleet commander will say, everybody, uh, if you're in a special snowflake, which they know what that is, it's a Hugin and, and interdictors and other expensive things that are primary targets. They're going to say, please, please S up in fleet. They will type S then you will add those people to the watch list as well. So those are high priority targets to uh, to rep. If you are in a DPS ship or a logistics ship, that's not you. It's if they're their Sino or something that's critical. There's usually only a few of them in the fleet and they're critical for the performance of the fleet. So that's part of it. The next part is how we coordinate but in Logi. So sometimes fleets can be 100 people, it's confusing. Make sure you go down to Logicoms. Um, if no one's in there yet, you can ask Logi to go down there. Then we have some coordination channels that I'll share here. Um, and I'm sharing it to everybody in the world, but that's fine. Um, so if you go over to the chat channels, you can search for Logi Brave. And I'll, I can drag it over here for you. So join, go ahead and join that channel. So in that channel, this is where we can do coordination and we can, you can see in the MOTD, um, some, not everybody has access to this, but they can go ahead and add who to put on the watch list. But the important one is that we use these Osprey and Basilisk channels f to coordinate our cap chain. So if you're in a scythe, you would not join the cap chain channels or in a scimitar, anything that doesn't can't be in the cap chain, you do not join them because it's actually going to mess up the Osprey pilots. Since uh, all of us, Karagalin, go ahead and join the Osprey channel just so you see what I'm doing, but then when we start, you can drop it. So everybody join uh, the Voltron Osprey cap chain channel. Looks like I'm missing one. If you don't know where it is, I can link it. Yeah, I need that link. So they should link that. You can ask, it would be good for you to ask which cap chain channel, sometimes when we're in bigger ones. Um, or so if someone forgot to quit the channel, then sometimes we'll switch channels. But it's important to, to ask which one should I be in. Okay, so uh, that really small print is a pain. Uh, it's not that <laughs> you don't really need to read it. Once it's you've had this class, you won't. Nor... Well, I'm also running a like a 17-inch laptop monitor rather than like a nice big 24-inch. Right. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add our cap chain buddies. So looks like some people dropped the cap chain channel. Come come back in, and what you're gonna do is. So in Ospreys, you do one up and one down. So for for Mike, one up is Kara Glenn and one down is Raj. Those are your cap chain buddies. I know we'll fix it for Kara Glenn because he doesn't have it, but go ahead and add to watch list the person above you and below you. So for me, since I'm at the top, then Tommy- So Jinx and Mike for me. Uh, if you're Kara Glenn, yes. Yes. Um, for me, it's Tommy who's above me, it's a circle, and Karaglen, who I already have. I usually put them in order on the watch list of who's up and who's down just so I can keep track. I'll make them green so I know that these are my people that I can use the watch list to target them and make sure that um, I, I know that those are my capturing buddies, so my high priority. Sometimes... Okay, so here's... I'm sorry. Sometimes I'll even, if there's room, I'll even add uh, the people below, like I'd put Mike and Sheik on, who were the next persons. Uh, so if Karaglin got jammed, then I would add, then I could go to Mike, just so I'd have that on my watch list. But I'm not, that's, we'll, we'll practice that. 
Go ahead with your question. Okay, so you said that generally when we're doing when we're setting up our watch list, it's good to color coordinate what you know who who's do who has what role on our watch list. Yeah. What's the best way to coordinate if say someone has multiple roles? As you said, you green for cap chain would be good, but what if one of the persons is also your FC? Um hopefully they're not FCing from Logi. Uh, <laughs> I haven't really seen that happen, but I would just like for me I have my priority list, so I know that white is the FC, I know green is cap chain blue I, I do other logistics pilots orange and red are snowflakes that's that's just my personal thing but it it's really for you you decide I'm not going to come audit your color scheme <laughs> well I just didn't know if you'd ever run across someone having multiple roles and that way might need multiple colors the, the one I find the most useful is is like the the green for the cap chain because that that becomes the highest priority thing to do um, when, whenever the fleet warps, you have to immediately cap chain your buddies, and we'll practice that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Caraglen, since you are not in the cap chain, I want you to go ahead and drop out. Okay. So he just dropped. So we need to be. We also need to have this channel up, and we, he just dropped. So that now means we immediately have to readjust. So now, I add Mike to Mike. He's gonna be my cap buddy and Karagalan is no longer my cap buddy. So when you die in fleet, you should, you're frustrated and everything, but you should drop that cap, cap chain channel. And you can say minus one in the channel, but dropping the channel is like the, the best, uh, best practice. Um, when things get crazy and people are dying really fast, it's really important to be able to adjust that. Um, so what I'll do later is when we're practicing, I'll say, Sheik, you're dead then I'll ask Sheik to leave the channel. So does anyone have any questions to this point? So far, so good. Okay. Um, so Karagalan, uh, you can come ahead, go ahead and fl fly with us and just rep us instead of um, just pick two people and rep them as opposed to capping them. Um, just to practice when we warp around, okay? Okay. So, uh, Mike, you're going to be my cap chain buddy, and Tommy, you're my cap chain buddy. These people, so you're all, you need to make sure you want to be in separate comms, particularly for Osprey, separate comms and GPS. They're going to be shitting it up. They tell jokes. Logicoms is serious business. It's quiet. It's lovely. Um, if if we warp somewhere and Mike zones out, which is usually me, so not to pick on Mike, Mike zones out. It's our responsibility to call each other out. Don't you know? Say hey, like hey, Mike, I need cap. Um, and you want to be talking to both your buddies. When we all have lots of capacitor, which helps when we have good skills and fitting and stuff. If things are going very, very well, sometimes, like in Ferroxes, uh, the DPS are in Ferroxes, they'll run out of capacitor. What we can do is somebody, the the LC, logistics commander, might say, let's go to combat cap, which means you take your, capa your capacitor transfer from the person above you, so for me that's Tommy, and then you give the capacitor to the person who's broadcasting for cap. And you do that for a couple cycles, and then... Um, then you turn, then you go back to the the cap channel. Does, does everybody understand that? So then, if we all have one on each other, well, that's still a lot of cap, cap. It's just not quite as strong. Um, so it, it, it's a way for us to adjust and help the, rep, the rest of the fleet. Okay, so let's go ahead and align to AX dot. So align, align, align. One of the beauties of the Ospreys, um, and my scythe buddy will have to watch their cap, beauty of the Ospreys is once we have our cap chain set up, we're going to be able to uh, run our hardeners, the adaptive invuls, and our micro warp drive, and all the reppers, and not run out of capacitor. Uh -huh. 
Whereas our buddy in the scythe will not be able to do that for more than 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah, 24 seconds. Yep. So you have to balance you have to balance what you're repping and stuff. Okay, well, there. I'll be able to use it tomorrow. <laughs> That's good. Ah, beautiful fleet warp. Okay, so on land, everybody needs to cap their buddy. So anchor up on me, which means keep at range 1,000. And, um, and then, uh, so I'll be flying us around. You guys are just following me. And then cap your buddy. It's the first thing you do every time you land. Anchor, cap your buddy. Two buddies. So anchor on me. Go ahead and lock your two buddies. So I'm not receiving cap yet. Make sure that all your stuff is on. So Mike, make sure you're cap chaining Jinx. Yeah, I forgot to drop the cipher. Okay, does anyone not is anyone not receiving two cap transfers? I'm Jinx is still not. Okay, now Jinx has two. So you can hover over the little symbol above the capacitor to see who's giving it to you. Um, so everyone go ahead and put your prop mods on, pick a buddy, uh, pick one of your buddies and just put all your reps on them just so you can see that you have the, that you can run everything at once. So prop mods on, so that's the micro warp drive. Everybody should be trying to keep up with me. Does anyone accidentally have the AB? Sheik, what, what are you flying with? We'll turn it off. It's not really that important. But the demonstration there is that we all keep lots of capacitor, and so it's not really an issue for the Ospreys. Okay, everybody go ahead and burn and take take the gate. Prop mod on and take the gate on land, but hold cloak. So when the f uh, when the fleet is moving early, it can be tempting to like oh there's no combat there's no bad guys in in system. Um, I'm not going to worry about the cap chain, but those those times where the fleet is lining, the FC is doing something, those are the times that you're going to work out all, any kind of kinks or issues in the cap chain. Um, you, if you wait until combat, then it's not going to work. Bunch of snatches around. Yeah, don't try not to shoot them. Okay, everybody go ahead and align to this. And then as soon as everybody breaks cloak, as soon as your buddies break cloak, you should be locking them up. So even though we're just aligning, you're locking them up, you're establishing cap chain. Um, so the LC shouldn't even have to call, you should just do that automatically. Beautiful fleet work. Again on land, go ahead and start locking up. But then FC might say take the gate, and that's fine, you didn't have a chance to. But it's just that practice of everybody um, doing it as soon as they land. We can lock up even in stealth, or no? Uh, when you're cloaked, so. it won't it won't let yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. But it's just I I want you to as soon as you break cloak, you should be thinking, okay, I need to lock up my buddies. Okay, everybody, go ahead and break cloak and align to a okay. All right, I'm testing a couple of you guys. Looks 
to Mike and Tommy, you should be calling out Jinx, saying, Jinx, you're bad. I'm not receiving cap. You need to be giving Jinx me cap. Jinx, my cap. There you go. So, yeah, communication, very, very important. Uh, so now we're going to go, I'm going to warp you, and then I'm going to tell, uh, I'm going to call out one of you guys' names, and you need to go ahead and drop. We're going to reestablish cap chain, and then we're going to call one of your names, and you need to go ahead and drop the cap channel. Um, and this could be, if you're only getting jammed, then you should say, we'll, we'll start with that. If you're getting jammed, so someone is ECMing you so you could no longer target your buddies, then you say, you need to cap around Mike, if you're Mike, and you use your name. Uh, and so then we'll know we need to adjust the cap chain. So that's what we're going to do. Huh. What do we say? Where we need to cap around? Right. So Mike, if you get ECM'd, you're jammed, you no longer can lock any targets. So um, so when we land, I'll do it as, as me. But if Jinx is jammed, then Mike needs to go to Tommy, and Tommy needs to go to Mike. Okay, okay, got it. It's like if uh, Jinx had dropped the, the shot. Right, so a jam is only like 30 seconds or a minute, I forget how long it is. But so it's not really worth me dropping the channel because I'm not dead yet. But I'm going to say Jinx is jammed. And so you guys had locked me up, but I can't lock you back. So now Tommy needs to go to Mike and Mike needs to go to Tommy. Now the jam is back on. So I need, I'll say uh, Jinx needs cap. Get, Jinx is back in the cap chain. So now go ahead and readjust again and put me back in the cap chain. So let's say uh, Sheik is jammed, so now Tommy and Raj needs to cap around Sheik. I can't really see if you guys are doing that, but go ahead and practice that. Okay, Mike, you've just been, there's some hurricanes, you didn't anchor, some of you guys didn't anchor up on me, so make sure you're anchoring on me. Uh, Mike, you just got shot, you're dead, go ahead and drop cap chain channel. So I need to uh, I need to lock Raj. Obviously the cap would have dropped on Mike if he's dead. Uh, I lock Raj and now Raj and I are cap chain buddies. So Raj, yeah, Jinx needs cap. Um, Mike, you reship. So this fight was in GE. Mike, you reship. You're back into Osprey. You warp back in. You rejoin cap chain. You say, Mike's back in the cap chain. Readjust cap chain. I stop capping Raj, I go to Mike. Sheik, Sheik, I need to cap on Tommy. So Raj, you just got outfit off, you're dead. Drop cap chain. Mike and Sheik, you need to readjust. Uh, the so I'm acting as the LC. So um, right now Raj is not broadcasting for uh, reps, but I know he's one of my buddies. I have him on my watch list, so it's okay to say like, "Hey, Raj needs reps," because that's going to be it's better if someone recognizes before the person broadcasts. We're going to be better as a fleet if we just go ahead and react. So um, if comms get too crazy, you don't want to don't want to do that but if you have someone locked up who's not broadcasting yet you can say um, you can say Mike needs reps and then that, that'll be faster than if we wait for Mike to broadcast so Logi communication is everything uh, any questions at this point what if I get tracking disrupted um, so tracking dis tracking should not do anything to us um, but the range, they can do, they can do range damps to us, which would mean that we have to do that much better to stay on anchor. So you just need to make sure that uh, you, when someone calls prop mods on, that you're staying with the prop mods on. But if the fleet gets spread out, you're just not going to be able to rep some of the people. So the Mollus and the 
the crucifier they also have a range modifier tracking doesn't do anything to us ECM that again you can uh, you should tell people to cap around you if you're just perma jammed that's happened to me someone's just decided that they're gonna give jinx a bad day <laughs> then that then you might drop the cap chain channel until you you have uh, then you can get back in if you have to warp off for any reason again you should you should say drop jinx out of the cap chain channel Uh, that's pretty much my class. Um, if if you want to, if you like the cap chain, so the cap chain is really really strong when it's going well and the communication's going well. It can go really poorly. If a couple people die and we don't readjust cap chain, it can go really poorly because you run out of capacitor. In Basilisk, um, it's even better because you have much much more tank. And if you get Logistics Cruiser Five, you can actually go to um, only having one cap chain buddy, and you don't need to. So then you always have a free one to give to the rest of the fleet. I just got disconnected. Who's that? Karaglen. Okay. So it's very good Karaglen to to talk in the third person and Eve. <laughs> you haven't dropped fleet yet, but we'll we'll keep you uh repped up. Oh sure. I don't know why that started happening. So if there's no more questions, we'll I'll end the class and then we'll fly back. Uh, you guys can keep these. I would check the ones I gave out against the uh, Doctrine ships, uh, particularly if, um, depending on the fleet that you take them with, they might not be fast enough. Uh, if if the FC is calling for ABs after burners, make sure you change. Because if you're running your Mark Warp Drive, you'll be way too fast, and your um, you'll, the AB helps with your keeping your SIG low, so you don't get hit as bad, and you'll die really bad. And if you bring an AB to a Micro Warp Drive fleet, you'll get dropped behind, you'll mess up the cap chain, and it's better just to uh, dock up and and I've had that happen. You grab the wrong ship. It's better to instead of trying to stay with the fleet, it's better just to to go off and try to find a micro drive I'm in I'm back all right uh, any final questions nope all right thank you guys. No, not by my side uh, what, uh, one, okay. one real quick question is there a point where a fleet my fleet commander might say okay we want scythes instead of cap chains or is cap chains the norm um, there are some fleets where, like, Ospreys might not be able to catch up, uh, okay. so, so they might call for Scythe. Again, when I was new, I flew Scythe a lot because then you don't you worry about yourself and you don't have to worry about everybody else so much. Um, okay. The the thing is, is it is the Ospreys. Five Ospreys are going to be stronger than five Scythes. Mm hmm. Um. And, but like I fly the scimitar a lot because I I really like the scimitar. <laughs> uh, and so yeah. then are the mimitar and the Kaldari are pretty much the best uh, the best when it comes to Logi for uh, for brave because we're a shield alliance. We also okay. we do have a couple armor fleets where they fly ar augurers, which are armor. Uh, one mm -hmm. thing to note about armor reps is they hit at the end of the cycle and not the beginning. So as soon as we, like Mike is hurt here, as soon as I press the button, he gets healed. Whereas with the armor reps, you have to wait all the way to the end of the cycle. So it makes it, makes it that much more important to um, lock them up quickly. So then at that point, you've got to recognize that you've got to make sure that you're hitting, that you're repairing them before they get destroyed at the end of the cycle. Right, so they need to be broadcasting for uh, as soon as their shield is going. They need to be broadcasting for armor, and then we would hit armor reps, hopefully. Um, and by the time it goes the cycle, then the armor reps would would land. And the armor reps are typically more value than the shield uh, to kind of make up for that delay. But it it makes 
you don't have like sometimes with shield you'll catch people like they'll be almost dead it's i've you know seen people with like one health one percent but because it's instant if you hit the buttons in time you still save them whereas armor if you lock them up in their and then hull and then you press the button there's no chance okay um COP Fly Logi in Slack is kind of like a Logi channel. We always need um, LCs, logistics commanders. A lot of times with like Munins and some other fleets, you're just anchoring on the FC now, so you don't actually have to fly around as the LC. You just do the coordination bit, which is I've kind of been doing um, today. That's like linking the Logi Brave channel, so getting people in Logi comms and setting up the watch list. And then, then you follow around the FC, he flies the whole fleet, and you just call out like, "Hey, Raj needs reps," and you rep Raj. Um, so that's uh, that's easier for me. Like, I don't mind LCing when it's that. It's a little bit harder when things go crazy to be flying the entire Logi wing, keeping them within rep range of the uh, of the fleet. But that's more of a uh, LC class, which we do have on the YouTube. If you guys are interested in that. Um, thanks for coming. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now. We can still talk and I'll, we can figure out how to, uh, get the broadcast buttons. All right. Thanks guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have a question.